Hey, it's Kelly Tarby Wholesalers. Today I'm going to go over with you a Rockwood Mini Light 2509S. Um, you can see here it does have the power awning, LED light strip, which is all controlled from that monitor panel right inside. Um, this one does have the oyster glass on the outside, the frameless windows, aluminum wheels. Um, you can see here, this is the back side of your water heater. Lift up on this is going to be your pressure release. It is a gas electric water heater. The gas switch is on the inside. There's a little on off toggle switch right down here in the bottom left, which is for the electric side. This also is the drain plug for winterization. Um, but initially when you first fill it up, you're just going to come out here and make sure that's pulled up. And what that's going to allow it to do is release the air as it's filling up. Once it starts pouring the water out, you just close that off. Then you know it's filled up and you can go ahead and light it. Okay. Large entry grab handle, just lift this up. It can go either way. Um, steps here, just fold over. Then the top just slides all the way in. Nothing to secure them. It's just they ride in there on a little lip. Friction entry door. So when you get this home, you're going to feel that that is kind of hard. It's meant to be like that so the wind doesn't take it, beat it all over the coach. So there's no latch pulling out from the side. It's kind of nice. You can open them and close them however you want. Okay. See here you have storage in here, which goes all the way through underneath of your jackknife sofa there. Um, now as far as the awning, you can adjust it as far as pitching it. All you do is lift up on this and just tighten this little nut right here. A little more storage there. Up here in the front, it will come with the power tongue jack, which is 12 volt. Um, it has an LED light on the front. Run it up and down right there. And if you pull this little rubber grommet out of the top, there's a little manual override, a little nut inside there that you can crank it up if that motor does burn up. Now this unit will have an auto changeover regulator, which is right here. You can see this one side has the arrow. It's going to pull from whatever side the arrow is pointing to. You can see that that eye is green. It'll be red when you don't have any gas. So what this will do is I always run both tanks open. So this is our shop tank here just for a little demonstration. So it's pulling from this tank. Say this tank run out in the middle of the night. It's going to automatically pull from this tank. And then when you come out here in the morning, you'll see that that eye is red. All you do is you take this over, switch to this side, then you close that one off and go get it filled up. Now you can see that turned to red because this obviously doesn't have any gas back to green. So it'll just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes people like to run it in the middle, then it drains both tanks at the same time. Then when you're out, you're out and you're kind of in trouble there. Should just go back and forth, you can get them filled up, exchange however you want to do it. We'll put a brand new 12 volt deep cycle battery in there. And right back here on the back side of the propane tank, that little red switch there is the battery disconnect. So when you're not using the coach, you can turn that. That way the LP detector and stuff like that doesn't drain your battery. Loading light here, switch is right on the bottom. Come over here to this side. power cord will go in there. This is the manual override for your jack up front. This is the handle here for your stabilizer jacks. You have four stabilizer jacks, one on each corner. Now these are just to stabilize the coach to keep it from rocking when you're inside the trailer. They're not for leveling tires or changing flats or anything like that. All you do is crank it down. Once it hits the ground, you go about another half turn, then you're done. Okay. A lot of times people will do like a cordless drill with a socket on there too to kind of speed up the process. Now this other handle here is for the manual override for the slide and I'll show you where that goes as well, which is this right here. It has a little notch cut out of it there. And then you can put this inside your drawer on the inside. This table here will go on the other side for your grill. There's a little bracket on the side here. You can see that. That bracket fits right on the side of the trailer. And the same bracket's on the grill. So pretty self-explanatory. All right. Now your fresh water fills right here. So if you just take this lid off of here, cap, what you'll do is if you're camping somewhere where they don't have water hookup, what you'll do when you get to the dump station is take your garden hose, stick it in here, turn the water on. What that's going to do is fill up an onboard tank. 
And then basically what you'll do is use your 12 volt pump to pump out of this tank to pressurize your taps and water systems. Now if they have water hookup where you're camping, then you won't even need to worry about that. So most campgrounds now have hookup. That's more if you're dry camping or going to a place where they don't have water hookup. Now a freshwater drain, you can see it's labeled here. If you look right down here, there's a little valve right here. All you'll do is just turn that open and close it because that's going to drain your fresh water tank when you're not using it. So typically what will happen is, is most people will fill that up, go camping, then what they don't use they'll drain out before they travel. That way they're not pulling that extra water weight. More storage here. Storage over here as well. Outside shower here, hot and cold just like the shower on the inside. This is the antifreeze inlet here for winterization. So you can hook that up, turn your pump on, it'll pump antifreeze out of the jug for you. Now this is your city water connection. So if you go to a camp spot and they do have water hookup, all you'll do is screw your garden hose into there. Now you'll want to make sure you always use your water pressure regulator. You can either screw that on here to the camper or you can screw it onto the water source. You just want to make sure that the water going into the coach has went through a regulator to reduce the PSI. Okay. Now this right here is going to be a black tank flush. So what happens is after you've been camping and you go to dump your tanks, what you'll do is you'll come right down here. Okay, you'll pull this cap off. Okay, and what you'll do is this one with the gray handle is your gray, which is your sinks and your shower. The black handle is your black, which is your toilet. So those will be in. Put your hose on there. Come over here, pull your black valve let it run through. As that's open, then it's ran through. Take your water hose, put it onto here, turn the water on. What that's going to do is it's going to spray inside the tank, clean off the sensors, clean off the toilet paper and waste inside the tank. Let that run for a minute or so. Shut the water off. After you shut the water off, then close the valve. Then come over here and pull your gray. What that's going to do is it's going to finish rinsing out your sewer hose. And once that rinses through, Close that, put your cap back on, you're good to go. Okay, all right, now if you go to a campground, they do have hookup for cable and satellite. Cable's on the left, satellite's on the right. Just screw the coax into here and it'll feed the inside of the coach. This is your 30 amp power cord. All you're gonna do is you just put this in, make a little slight right turn in this big nut here. You just thread that on there. Just keeps it from going anywhere. And this light right here will tell you if you have power coming in from the source. So if you don't have a light turning on here, that means where you're plugging in, something's fouling up over there. Okay, sewer end caps here, bumper end caps. You can pull this off. A lot of people store their sewer hose in there, and you can just replace that. A lot of times what people do is run a little screw down through there with a chain on it so it doesn't fall off when you're traveling. Full size spare. It is prepped for a backup camera, full walkable roof. Um, I would just mainly go up there just for maintenance. Don't go up there and hang out at a NASCAR race or anything like that. Ladder here, again, two more stabilizer jacks. Mini outside kitchen here, two burner cooktop, hot and cold. A little bit of storage there. And then when you push this in, the gas hose is right down here which is hooked up right down here at the bottom. There's a quick connect gas line right there, okay? And that will run off the bottle up front. Pull your two clips here. This will go in. And all you're gonna wanna do is make sure you clip it back in place on both sides. You have a mini fridge over here, which is just 110, where the refrigerator inside is gas and electric. You can take the TV from the inside of the coach Bring it out here, put it on the same bracket, hook up here. Now this little port right here is going to be another quick connect gas line. Put your barbecue on here and that TV I sh or that little table I showed you earlier will sit right here. Okay. This is the back side of the refrigerator. It's for auto defrost. You always want to leave that out. A little moisture come out of there. This is the exhaust for your furnace. So right now we have the furnace running. If you hold your hand close to this, it will be blowing out hot air just to let you know it is on. Now that will get hot though. Outside speakers here to their exhaust for the range there. 
We'll go in and we'll check out yep. the inside. All right, so right here inside the door is gonna be your monitor panel. Just have some light switches here, inside, outside, scare lights. Um, then right here you're gonna have your monitor panel. So like right here, I'm holding down the battery switch. Anytime you're plugged into 110, it's gonna trickle charge your battery. So that's gonna show fully charged. Anytime you're hooked to your tow vehicle, if it's set up properly, it's gonna trickle charge your battery as well. Gray, sinks and shower. You can see that that's low and it'll tell you as it's filling up where they're at. Black and fresh. Water pump here. It is an on-demand pump, so if you're running off your fresh water tank, just come in here and flip this. You can leave it on. And then as soon as you turn on a faucet, then the pump will kick on. You turn it off, the pump will kick off. So you're not over here flipping the switch on and off, on and off. Water heater, so after you make sure it's filled, turn it on gas, come over here, flip this switch. Turn it on electric, flip this switch, and the switch on the water heater itself. Okay? Slide out switch is here. It does have a clutch on it, so once it's all the way out, you're going to hear that noise right there. Perfectly normal. Same way when you run it in. The awning to run it in and out is right here. Okay? All right, so you can see here you have 50 50 double basin sink with the cover here. A lot of people use the back side of this as a cutting board as well. Um, solid surface countertops. You have the glass cooktop over here. A lot of people will use that down just for more storage area. And when you go to lift it up, just fold it and that'll go right there. The first thing you want to do when you go to, on a camping trip, turn both your propane bottles on. Come here to your stove, turn the three burners on or two or whatever, use the sparker knob, sparker, light those up, let those burn for about 15 to 20 seconds. What that's going to do is it's going to get all the air out of the lines. That way when you go to fire up the furnace or the water heater or the refrigerator, what have you on gas, they're going to function properly. If you don't, what will happen is, is they'll get it some air or whatever and then they won't fire and then you're wondering what's going on. So just make sure you do that first before you do anything else. Now the oven, just come down here, put it over to pilot, push and hold, and then just take like a stick lighter, stick it right down there and light it up. And then you can leave the pilot on if you want or just relight it every time, however you want to do it. Okay. TV over there light here of the range hood, exhaust fan, microwave works just like a home, pretty self-explanatory. Now your microwave, any wall outlets, air conditioner, you have to be plugged in to utilize those functions and features. Everything else will either run off gas or 12 volt. Stereo here, AM, FM, CD, DVD, the whole nine yards. Um, raised pan refrigerator fronts here look very nice. Turn it on here. Push the button in for auto. What auto is, is going to search for electric first. If you can't find electric, it'll automatically switch over to gas. Now, if you know you're going to be running it on gas, just go ahead and pop the button out and run it on gas. Less thanking for the computer on the refrigerator. Okay? But, now one thing with this refrigerator is, it'll work just as good as the one at home will, but help it out. So, if you're going camping on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, plug it in. It's going to take about six to eight hours to cool down initially, so the more you can kind of help it out and work with it, the better. Yeah. All right, so right down here, you have your fuse panel, breaker box. So all your 110 breakers are here, labeled here. 12 volt fuses are labeled here. You also have two 40 amp fuses over here, which are for your converter. Your converter will, because basically everything in the coach is going to be 12 volt. So when you plug in the 110, it converts everything from 110 down to 12 volt. So when you're using your coach, you might hear a little fan humming down here. That's just the fan keeping your converter cool. Okay? Heat's ducted throughout the sides here. You can see that. Bunks in the back, double over double. There's a ladder underneath there, which you can hook on here to allow people to get up on the top bunk. Now, a lot of these LED lights, if there's not a switch, there's just a little button right in the center. Just push it, turn it on and off. AC here. Now this is ducted throughout the ceiling so you can see the ducts here. Now if you want, a lot of times what will happen is, is once you first get to a camp place and it's really really hot in here, you can open both of these. Essentially it makes it non-ducted. It's going to pour all the cold air out right here. Then once it starts cooling down, then you can close these, shoot it off through the ductwork. 
Now this thermostat here works just like at home. So very, very self-explanatory there. Like we have the furnace right now set on 70. Um, if we lowered that down, it'll shut off and kick on as you set it. LP detector right down here. Now the outlets, there's going to be, usually there's two GFIs per coach. So say you plug into that outlet right outside the door and it's not working, come in here and make sure that this one isn't tripped. Because if that's tripped, the other ones won't work. Okay, light switch here. Fan here, all you're going to do is pull down on that little knob, crank this up. And it does have the cover on the top there, so if it is raining, you could leave it open. Turn it on there, and you can adjust your speeds by hitting it again, obviously, one through four. Shut it off. Really, really nice fans. Shower there, hot and cold. This will come off, skylight over the tub. Toilet here. It is a foot flush right on the side, so if I push the flush down to about maybe a quarter of the way, what it'll do is it'll release some water, push it down all the way, it'll flush to the toilet. Now you always want to leave a little bit of water in here just to keep that rubber seal right there nice and pliable. This is the box with your grill on it. Nice U-shaped dinette. Obviously it's in the travel position there. You can pull these back cushions off, set those in here to make it into a bed as well. Has the Nightshades here, just lift up on those and pull down. Very easy to open the windows, just crank the knobs. Pretty self explanatory there. Storage above. Light on and off. Does have the surround sound speakers. Now, the Murphy bed, just pull those pillows off of there. Obviously, you have your sofa. Nice there. Lift up on the bottom until this will lay flat. Okay, and all you're going to do is unpin each side. And you're just going to grab here. Make sure you don't have your hand in here to get it pinched. Just lay that down, and you're all set to go. Obviously, I unstrapped the mattress, but it's a one-man job, and you can leave it down, too, if you want. I mean, that's totally up to you. It is nice to get it up and out of the way. Gives you a little more floor space, a little more seating room, outlet over here, storage on both sides, vent above, so very, very nice feature there as well. Then to put it back, all you're going to do is do just the opposite, lift up there, nice and easy, just take it all the way up. And you're just going to pin it both sides then the sofa lift up on the bottom and just pull back on the top lays right down for you okay if you have any questions at all don't hesitate to give us a call 877-877-4494 thanks a lot